happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? <laughs> Some of you guys go, yeah, we could do that in church, yeah. God is a God of joy, right? And uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I am so happy to see so many faces in the building, and there's people in the overflow. So can we give God praise that, yeah. Really, if you're looking for a church that's really lit, this is it. We love Jesus. We love to worship. But we also have fun doing it. I want to say a big thank you to the team that planned Black Heritage Sunday. You guys did an amazing... Where's the team? Can you please stand? The team that, that planned Black Heritage Sunday. Everybody that was on the committee, stand. Yeah. Come on, clap it up for this amazing... Yeah. You all did an amazing job. I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Al, our lighting guy. He, uh, where's Al? Al spends hours. Come on up here, Al. Come on up here, Al. Yeah, he, he does, he, do, he comes in here like seven, eight hours and just works on the lights and makes sure everything's on point. Let's get up for the one and only Chris Buford, our amazing worship and creative arts director for just an amazing job. I'm so proud of our church. I'm so proud of all the cultures that we have. As you saw in the video, we have people from Africa, not just African-Americans, but people actually from Africa. This is a gift that they gave me from Africa. So I'm rocking it from the motherland. We have people from Haiti, from Jamaica, from uh, Dominica, from St. Croix, from Bahamas, St. Lucia. Listen, ACF is really a multicultural, multi-ethnic church. Can we celebrate that this morning? Puerto Rico, Fort Myers, New York, Brooklyn. Three oh five seven eight six nine five four. And if you don't have an area code, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Real quickly, um, next Sunday is going to be a great Sunday. It's our Vision Sunday. We're going to talk about, give you a report on how the church is doing, where we're going. So if you want to ever want to know what's going on with this church um, financially, where your money goes, you want to be here next Sunday because we're going to take time to give you a full report and also cast vision on where we're going as a church. So if you ever wanted to know, I wonder what they do with that money they collect on Sunday. Come and find out on Sunday. If you want to know where we're going, what God is laying on our hearts for the future, next Sunday we're calling it Vision Sunday, and we want you to be here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's get ready for the word. Um, I am going to be extremely long this morning, but I'll be done by 10. I'll be done. <laughs> And so the, ser the sermon this morning is a special sermon entitled, Built to Overcome. And I want you to listen to this sermon with your hard hat on. Because you're going to be called to build something. And whenever you enter construction zone, you got to change the way you look. God didn't just bring you this far just for you to be average. He's brought you this far to build something. As a matter of fact, you are standing on what other people built. I was thinking the other day that some of us, we criticize our forefathers for the things they didn't do. And I was talking to a colleague of mine and the reason why you can see what someone didn't do is because you're standing on their shoulders. because they built the foundation for you and they laid the foundation for you to be able to see better in the future we can see a future because we stand on the shoulders 
of Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King. They sat in the back of the bus so we could buy the bus. And so it would be a waste for you and I to live in this season and not maximize their sacrifice. So as we get ready to go into this word, I want you to pray and ask God to shift your mind so that you can build something before you leave this earth. Father, we thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for who you are and thank you for what you've done. But I just pray this morning that truth would leave this mouth and enter the ears and the hearts of your people. And pray that we would reconcile the hurt that we experienced in the past from oppression and discrimination, that we would realize that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. And so speak to us today, and we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to the book of Revelation. I'm going to read one verse. You may, you may remain seated. Uh, Revelation chapter 7, as I was preparing to share this message this morning, this is where the Holy Spirit led me, and I began to look at this verse with a different set of lens, um, because this verse kind of helps us understand God's intention and God's purpose and how God works everything out. Revelation chapter uh, 7, if you have your Bible, and I'm going to be in verse 9, when you find it, say Amen. Um, John, the revelator, John, the, the guy who had a chance to, God used to kind of get us to see what's going on in the future, um, he writes that he sees this scene in heaven, and John says, I saw before the throne people from every race, from every tribe, from every tongue gathered before the throne. As John writes this, he says, after this I look and therefore before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. I want to begin our time of teaching this morning with three questions. And here's the first one. Did God create all human beings equally? In the... Pledge of Allegiance, we say that all men are created equal. Did God really create all of us equal? Where did the decadence, where did the de degradation of one human being degrade another human being come from? That's the second question. The third question is, why do we even have to have a yearly historical inquiry into the contributions of people of African descent in America and around the world? And the fourth question is, will there ever be a level playing field for us of African descent? So in this sermon this morning entitled Built to Overcome, I want to expose everyone listening today to the reality that God intends for you and I to be everything he has called us to be. There are no deficiencies in you and in your abilities, only the ones that you set up for yourself. Let me say it one more time. There is no lack. There are no deficiencies in you or your capacity to be great, only the ones that you set for yourself. So John says, I saw before the throne at the end people from all race, from all tribes, from all tongues. If there is a multiracial, multi-ethnic, multicultural gathering in heaven, then God must want earth to be multiracial, multicultural, and multi-ethnic. If at the end it looks multiracial, in time it needs to look multiracial. If eternity is going to be a demonstration of God's creativity, and I'm not being Natasha this morning, I'm just kind of preaching, my Staying in my lane. If eternity is going to reflect diversity, why can't time celebrate diversity? If heaven is not one shade, 
If heaven is not predominantly one color, why should the earth operate under the premise that one color is better than the others? If at the end of human history, when we all gather before the throne of God, there will be diversity in heaven, why can't the church look like what heaven is going to look like? Why do we have black churches? Why do we have white churches? Why do we have urban churches and suburban churches? If the, Jesus says, I came to build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So I would submit to your understanding this morning that prejudice, discrimination, racism, oppression is not something that in, is in God's mind or his intent. Because if God is going to gather all his children at his throne, it means he wants them to start looking like that right now. And so this morning, as we talk about that you and I are built to overcome, I want to give you four building blocks that you need to understand to relocate. Somebody say relocate. relocate. My intent this morning is to do a relocation project. To relocate your mindset from your blackness to your godliness. To relocate your mindset from being a minority based on how you've been labeled. To understand that you have superiority based on how God sees you. Somebody say relocate. relocate. And so I want to give you four building blocks this morning. Number one, number one, if you're, if you're looking at the screen, here's what I want you to understand. You and I, we are created with worth and dignity. We were created with worth and dignity. God did, not, God did not create one race with more worth or dignity than the other. And I'm going to borrow your sanctified imagination this morning. This is not theologically in the Bible, but I'm speculating. The Bible says that out of the dust of the earth, that God created man. Remember, I'm borrowing what? Your sanctified imagination. imagination, just food for thought. The color of soil is black. Can we have an honest conversation this morning? I'm just, I, again, there's no Bible verse for this. Don't go and say, my pastor said this. I'm just asking you to stretch your imagination. If out of the dust of the earth God created man and soil is black, let me just let that park right there. When God created mankind through Adam, God did not say, I'm going to make one race more superior than the other. You are equally worthy in the eyes of God as any other race or ethnicity in the, on the earth. Can we settle that? The Bible says that we are created in the image, in the likeness of God. So if mankind is created in the image and the likeness of God, which I'm talking about the human race, God did not make one type of man more superior than the other. The idea of someone being inferior to the other comes from the fall that happened in Genesis chapter 3. Racism, oppression, degradation is a result of sin that has entered into mankind that now makes us think one person is better than the other. Are we good? So here's my truth I want you to walk away with. The creation of mankind in the image and likeness of God encompasses inherent worth and dignity respective of race or gender. God did not make women to be less than men or men to be more powerful than women. He made us all equal, but he gave us roles to play. Can I teach here this morning? God gave us roles to play because God is a God of order and there needs to be order in everything that he does. So when someone says because you are a different shade or because you have an accent 
There's a deficiency in you that is anti-biblical and anti-God. Now, I need to be very, 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 very direct with you. Racism was taught from the Bible back in the days of segregation. You had pastors preaching that God created people of African descent to be inferior to their masters. That was a raping of the Bible. A misrepresentation of a God of love, a God of justice, a God of mercy, a God of compassion to feed the narrative that where you are is because God wanted you to be there. That is a lie straight from hell. And I want to submit to you today that when you are a child of God, you have every single ounce of dignity or worth that God has put inside of you because God put himself inside of you. Don't let anyone make you feel any less than what God has declared you to be. Can I get an amen from the whole church? Because I know I'm preaching in the right church this morning from the shade that I'm looking at. Number two, and this is where we're going to kind of get a little, you and I were genetically positioned for greatness. This is going to be a little spicy this morning. When God allowed the black race to emerge from the Tower of Babel, there are things that God put in the black race or the race of African descent that were meant to position you to be great. And the reason why slavery was so prevalent was because of your superiority. The reason why they went and brought slaves from Africa and brought them to America or the Caribbean was because of the way that we were built, the bone structure. The ability to work long hours and carry heavy stuff. So when you diminish that you were genetically made to be great because somebody misrepresented your design to benefit their objective, it now brings you to a place to think that you have to change who you are in order to be superior when you were genetically positioned to be great. I'm not getting any help in here, but I want you to understand the Bible represents some of the greatest people in the Bible were people of African descent. Go with me to 2 Samuel. Can I preach in this church? Okay. 2 Samuel chapter... Okay, let me borrow your real Bible. My Bible's acting up my electronic Bible. These things, can't trust them. <laughs> These tablets, that's why I always carry my Bible. These tablets, man, sometimes they mess with you. 2 Samuel, if you have your Bible, 2 Samuel 11, verse 3. Can, can we teach this morning? I don't have much time. Dang. 2 Samuel, what am I looking for? 2 Samuel 11, verse 3. Here's what it reads. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and one said, is not, this is not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Bathsheba, when you do biblical history, she was a woman of African descent. And that's why Solomon, David's son, was a man of African descent. Now, who's Solomon? The Bible says Solomon is the wisest man to ever live. Now, let me let that, can I, is everybody paying attention? Yeah. Solomon being the wisest man and rich, by the way. So when we are told that if you are of African descent, you have a learning disadvantage, that is not true. Because some of the greatest inventions that were made that you'll never read in the history books were made by people of African descent. Can I get some amens in this house today? 
what am I saying to the church? I'm speaking to our young people in this room today who want to act up a fool and cut up in school thinking that all we're good for is to play basketball, football, or to sing music, or to be rappers. There is greatness inside of you. There are surgeons in this church. There are entrepreneurs in this church. There are engineers in this church. There are business people in this church. There are great world difference makers in this church. Don't you ever let someone make you feel that you can't be what God has called you to be. Somebody please say amen. Solomon, one of the wisest men to ever live, was your shade. First Kings. Do I have any friends this morning? Y'all cutting up in school, having your parents have to leave work to go to parent-teacher conference. Because somebody told you it's cool to be the class clown and you don't want to sit down and get your education, not understand that you are smarter than that person sitting next to you. You just haven't realized that God has made you to be great. Can I teach it for some, some young men in this church are just settling just to be an employee when God has called you to be a boss man? <laughs> to make boss moves. First Kings chapter 10 verse 1. <laughs> now when the queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with a difficult question. The queen of Sheba came from Africa. Black queen meeting black king. Y'all better read your Bibles. Let me show you something real quick. Can I, are we good? Go with me real quick, media. Let's go. Let me show you the slide real quick. So people say, well, where, 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 where did we come from? Where did, where did races come from? Where did, where did the different races from the earth come from? I'm going to give you a quick three-minute understanding of where the races came from. Everybody say, pay attention. All right, number one. Let's go. Go with me, media. So, so the Bible talks about this thing that happened with the sons of Noah. We know, that, we know that when God destroyed the earth, he restarted with one family, which was the family of Noah. Noah had three sons. Their names are on the board, Japheth, Ham, and Shem. Okay? When you read in the Bible and you read these names that sound really interesting, that has too many syllables for you to pronounce... You need, take a picture of this. This is, this is where most of the people of the earth, they got their origins from, from the three sons of Noah. Okay? Now, I want you to pay attention to the middle one, which is Ham, which was the son of the darker shade, which became the father or the forefather of African people or people of African descent. The Bible talks about this place called Cush, Sheba, Havilah. These are all regions within Africa. Now, let me walk you through this real quickly. Let me go real quick. Go with me. Next slide, media. Are you guys learning? Okay. The, 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 the sons of Noah, no, back up. The sons of Noah, Shem, which means name, right? This is the son of Noah that modern-day Asians, Jewish, and Arabs come from. Okay, just take a picture of this real quickly. I'm not going to have time to break it down. You can go read the verses. So when you try to find out where these people come from, this is where they originated from. I'm going somewhere with this. Are we Okay. Okay, I may not get through this today, but it's okay. Number two, let's go with me next slide, media. So think about Shem. Shem is the, comes from Adam, Adam's son, Seth. Seth gives birth to Abraham. Abraham gives birth to Judah. Judah gives birth to David. That gives birth to Jesus. Let's go real quickly. Let's move on. Next slide. So the sons of Shem. So the Semitic people, the Jewish and the Arabs, these are some of the names of those that you would find around the, on the earth. I'm giving you the modern day where they settle. Next slide. Let me go real quick. Pull out your cameras real quickly. All right? Next one. Let's go quick. So the next sons are Japheth. Japheth names means God will enlarge. This is where most of your European, Caucasian, and Asian nations come from, from Japheth. 
These are people who settle in the Black Sea, etc. Take your cameras and take a picture real quick. Let's go. If you want to learn more, come to Bible study. Next slide. <laughs> We're having a special Bible study this Tuesday. So if you want to, if you want to spend time learning, come to Bible study. Next slide. Okay, so here. So him, which comes from the root word hot or black. These are the people who settle in Ethiopia, south of Egypt, and settle somewhere between the northern and Persian Gulf. So the Hebrew word for Egypt is Mizraim. You would also find the word foot or put, which talks about northern Africa, or Canaan, the Canaanites who settled above Africa. Let's go with me real quickly. Are you guys following me real quickly? Uh, I'm trying to get you to understand something here. So, so when we talk about the sons of Canaan, this is the thing that you would look at. We'll talk more about this on Tuesday. Why am I taking you through this? history lesson. I'm trying to get you to understand that in the, when, the, when the sons of Ham settled in the region of Africa and settled in the region of those, those were not just regions that were poor. It's getting a little saucy in here. Are we good? So why Africa? Why when I talk about your geographic position? The reason why Africa interested the rest of the world is because Africa was originally and naturally designed to be a place of great prosperity. So watch this. If you come from a land of prosperity, God intended for you to be prosperous. God, I can't get any help in here. I'm, I'm not getting any help in here. I'm not. So, so let, me, let, me, let me help you understand the land of Africa that you think it's only kids with big bellies and who look poor, which is the image that they try to show you. Africa has a large quantity of natural resource, including diamonds, sugar, salt, Gold, iron, cobalt, uranium, copper, bauxite, silver, petroleum, cocoa beans. Y'all like Starbucks. Y'all don't know they're getting that from our country. <laughs> tropical timber and tropical fruit. Watch this now. Africa has some of the greatest oil reserves. Sudan, Nigeria, two of the main oil producers. The United States and the European countries took most of the Democratic Republic of Congo's oil production. Watch this now. In 2010, Sudan exported oil that was estimated by the United States Department to be $9 billion. Some of the world's greatest and richest people are from Africa. Now, let me bring it home to you. Sin produces greed. Can I teach to agape today? Sin produces what? Greed. Greed causes you to overlook people as people. And you see them as a means to profit. So follow my train of thought here. Sin in man, which makes them greedy, says, wait a minute, there's a continent called Africa. Let's invade it and take their people, because once you take the people, the land becomes free game. Let's move them from their motherland, put them on slave ships, bring them over to America, so that they can work in our cotton fields, they can work in our plantations as we rob their country of their natural resources. And we are going to create a system that makes them poor because they're always going to be dependent on us. Can I preach here today? Can I teach the church today? So, so, so Abraham Lincoln declares emancipation. So yes, we're going to let the slaves in the South go free. We're going to let them go free. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. If you free people, 
but you don't give them land or resources to go and build wealth, they are going to end up on the street, what, homeless. And anyone who's desperate enough will steal to survive. Father God, help me today in this church so that people can understand. So watch this now. Can I teach you guys something here today? So here what it is. So we release you from slavery, but we release you empty-handed. So we leave you on the street. You're a free slave, but now you have no land. You have no house. You have no property. So now you have to go steal. And when you steal, you break the law. The laws that we made. We're going to create another form of slavery called prison. When you break the law, we're going to arrest you because legally you just broke the law. And we're just going to recycle you through the back door to put you back into another form of slavery. That's why the prisons in America, over 60% are people of African descent. Do you understand the system? Father, help me today. Father, help me today. People, open your eyes. And, and, and what, how, what does that have to do with the Bible? It has a lot to do with the Bible. If you don't get yourself under the blood of Jesus to renew your mind, to transform your mind from thinking of yourself as less than what God has called you to be. You will spend your whole life wishing for heaven and never have heaven meet you on earth. God didn't just want to bless you when you die and go to heaven. God wants you to live in wealth. He wants you to live in prosperity. Preach, Dr. Phil. If God took me to Africa where there's diamond, there's oil, there's riches, it means he wants me to prosper. Open your eyes, people. That's why I said in this church, we are not raising jailbirds. We're not raising suspects. We're raising prospects. We're going to preach to you until you go to school. You make something out of yourself because greater is he that is in me than he that is in every devil that tried to stop me from being what God has called me to be. I declare you no and void. Every weapon formed against me will not Somebody shout glory. glory. You're built to overcome. You don't attack people who are weaker than you. You attack strong people. If we were weak, we would have never been attacked. If you were not a threat, you would never be threatened. Let me talk to my people as your pastor, for some of you as your spiritual father. It is a waste to live in a land that gives opportunities for you to make a relationship with obstacles. Amen. Let me run it back for those of you that didn't hear what I just said. It is a waste, it is a sin for you to live in a country that is ripe with opportunity, but you have a relationship with obstacles. It's called you make excuses for everything that's hard. Let's go back to Africa. Oil, diamond, petroleum, gold, sugar, salt, uranium. You know uranium? Uranium is what they used to build bombs. Are y'all good? So you're going to tell me you took people from a rich land and you're going to call them 
the lower income people in a country that you introduced them to because you created a system to keep them down. And we fall right into it because we're taught to be all flash, no cash. Let me get to point number three so I can get out of here. Are we good this morning? I'm not preaching nationals. I'm preaching Bible. <laughs> let's go, media. Let's, let's go. So you were redeemed. I'm going to probably stop right here. You were redeemed by Jesus. Look what it says in Galatians. I want to end here because this is really, really powerful. Galatians chapter 3, verse 20. Can I land here, Brother Mac? Sure. Brother Mac here? Okay. Right. <laughs> I got to make sure my Aaron is here. I got my people who back me up when I'm preaching, so y'all can't touch me. And if any of y'all are mad, I just want to let you know we got guys carrying. <laughs> I'm just... Galatians 3, 28. Let's go. Never mind. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The Bible says, watch and pray. Look what the Bible says. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Jesus Christ. Now, can I talk to you from a biblical and a cultural perspective? There is a movement in the black community to diminish Jesus as the savior of black people. That tells you that Jesus is the white man's God and he's the white man's religion. Let me help you understand the historical Jesus that you've never seen in the pictures. The Jesus of the Bible doesn't have long hair and blue eyes. The Jesus of the Bible, when you read the Revelation, it says his hair is like wool, which means it's like my texture. It's curly. Ah, can I preach here for a minute? Huh? So, so how do we know that Jesus is a multiracial, multi-ethnic savior? Let me get you to understand that. Jesus comes from Abraham. Abraham is from Iraq. Jesus went down to Egypt. That's Africa. When Mary and Joseph fled from Herod, they went down to Africa. Y'all not praying with me here. So Jesus of the Bible is a Jesus whose blood has Iraqi blood. It has African blood. It has Jewish blood in it. Are y'all preaching with me here today? Are you, guys, are you guys getting this? That's why he can save everybody. Because when he hung on the cross, he was a multiracial, multi-ethnic, multicultural savior whose blood could save everyone in the earth realm preach Dr. Phil in the Bible says uh, whom the son has set free uh, is free indeed uh, I love Jesus because uh, he set me free uh, from my oppressors uh, he set me free uh, from the people who told me I would never be anything somebody shout Jesus The reason why the devil uses our people to attack Jesus is to get you to abandon the one solution that can really make you free for the rest of your life. There is no political movement that will make you free. There is no Democratic or Republican president that will make you free. There is only one key to freedom, and that's called Jesus. When you find Jesus, he changes your mindset. He changes your appetite. He changes the things that you pursue. When you find Jesus, you no longer act a fool. You walk in purpose. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. When I find Jesus, I find prosperity. I find keys. He says, I will give you keys to the kingdom. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. And that's why when they tell you that you don't need to follow Jesus, tell them it's a lie. He's the only one that can make me who I am today. Built 
to overcome. You can't afford not to be a Christian based on your history. Don't go try and be no Muslim and no, um, you know, black Jew and black Israelite. Cut that nonsense out. If they could have saved you, they would have gotten on the cross for you. I'm not following no one that hasn't that has have a resume. If you want me to follow you, show me your resume. When I see Jesus' resume, I see victory. I see power. I see authority. I see a demon chaser. I see a barrier breaker. I see a God who can make me who I am. I see a God that can take a boy that came to this country with two pairs of shirt and one pants and make him into a world-known man. Why? Because when you follow Jesus, you can't go wrong. When you follow Jesus, he will open doors that man cannot close. When you follow Jesus... He will elevate you. He says, I will make you the head and not the tail. I will make you above and not beneath. I will make you a lender and never a borrower. When you follow Jesus, you will find your destiny. You will find your purpose. You will find... Somebody shout Jesus! I don't care what they try to tell me in school. That if you follow Jesus, you're following a white man's religion. Well, it worked for me, and it will work for you. Do I have a witness in this house? Whom the Son has set free is free. Dr. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream that one day my black boy would play with a white girl. I have a dream that one day black men will be free. Give me my mic. Church, well, I have a dream today. I have a dream that Agape Christian Fellowship will be a church that represents the name of God, not just of people going to heaven. We're going to raise up kingdom ages. We're going to raise up demon chasers. We're going to raise up great men and women. We're going to have educated people. I have a dream today. I have a dream today that your family will be blessed because you know Jesus. I have a dream today that you will never be cursed. You will be blessed. You will be the crown. I have a dream. Stand to your feet. I have a dream today that people who come to this church poor and broke, busted, and disgusted will find Jesus. They will walk in holiness. They will walk in sanctification. And then their mind's going to be right. They will get bachelor's degree. They will get master's degree. They will get doctorate degree. I have. Built. To overcome. So here's what I'm going to invite you to do. Put your hard hat on. And get to work. Because when you're in a construction zone, things fly. Got to protect your brain. The enemy is going to throw stuff at you after this sermon. Put your hard hat on. Somebody's going to tell you that preacher that just preached over there, he's just manipulating you. Put your heart out on. The Bible calls that the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. So here's what we're going to do. Alvin, you ready? You need ready? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask you to start writing down what you're going to build from this point forward because you're built I heard three people you're built I heard two people you're built 